every crisis, every solution to a crisis has to begin with the agreement in general of what the facts are. There is now what I would call a very intense but informal uh, conversation that affects both the science and diplomacy. For example, there are people around the world who are still researching the virus and collaborating with each other. There are people who are working on vaccines and probably exchanging information with each other. Medical data is being exchanged. What we don't have yet is the kind of global conversation that begins to bring all of these things together in one place. I can see solutions to various aspects of this occurring very quickly. Uh, we already have what we think is a pretty good model for how to stop the spread of the uh, contagion with uh, New Zealand and South Korea and Germany having taken very quick and dramatic steps. I personally think that it will reach the, I'll call it the national government and the international community cooperation level more or less last. And that's kind of what happened in the ozone layer uh, treaty as well, where you had the facts, a sense of a crisis, international impact, a recognition to act, and then the governments got into it and uh, established the convention to, uh, to solve the problem. I think that the most obvious thing will be at the national level, the uh, prioritization of health as a national security issue. Interestingly enough, it's a national security issue now, not because of what's happening domestically in countries, but what's happening globally. Then I think that you're going to see some major changes in international institutions. I'm not taking either side on the WHO issue or China's role in not yet allowing uh, people to actually do detailed research about the origin of the uh, virus, but advancing the collaboration and the level of discipline and responsibility internationally about the outbreak of diseases will certainly be a major goal for WHO in the future. I wouldn't say that WHO will become an independent agency by any means, but they will try to strengthen the cooperation. And right now, the idea of collaborating at uh, the national security level with national security advisors uh, about uh, future pandemics would be a very good way to uh, start and uh, and increase awareness of the, of the problem because we all know there will be another one sooner or later. And when you think about crises around the world, if you put the personal security of populations, let's say, not having wars uh, as the first priority, then the second priority is quite often uh, adequate food and support for the populations themselves. And if that process fails, you have famine, you have malnutrition, you have children uh, growing up without the kind of mental abilities that they would have had if they had a proper diet and so on. So it's very consequential. This seems to me to be an issue that both helps the international community solve a number of problems, including health problems and water uh, safety problems, hygiene problems, uh, but also protects against famine and disease. We see this happen time and time again in areas that break down, that all kinds of difficulties arise spontaneously because you don't have uh, an adequate uh, focus for security and especially uh, personal security for populations and then food security to sustain them. One of the things that we're not necessarily looking at now is imagining what a solution would be. What would, when you reach some point in the future and if you could say, we've now uh, achieved our goal, what would you say it would be? And it is a combination of having a healthy population and healthy economies. So these two principles can't be separated and therefore uh, that should remain to be our goal. And it always helps in a negotiation to actually imagine what a perfect solution would be.
hardly ever reach it, but imagining it helps you line up the priorities and the points to discuss and the interim goals to achieve. Rethinking Diplomacy as a program is designed to bring, uh, I would call it new and uh, fresh look uh, of the tools of diplomacy to the uh, reality, to the truth of, of science. In order to bring the truth of science to the reality of policy, you have to have a discussion. And to have a discussion, you have to be able to know some of the tools for, for having a discussion. One of the central truths of diplomacy is that you can never lecture someone into accepting your point of view. That is impossible. The only way for an effective discussion for diplomacy to actually succeed is to start with a value that the other player or players also accepts. That's the reason why you look for common space to begin with. Uh, and when you find that you have appealed to someone's values and you do it by expressing your point of view in the best way possible for the other person to accept it. It's not compromising your point of view, it's making them, helping them understand that it is possible to reach a form of agreement. So I'm very excited about it, actually. I think it's a marvelous uh, concept, and uh, I am looking forward to doing uh, my part of the work to make it possible.